I'm sorry. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's it's actually late for me. Don't worry. I've been drinking since well before noon. Because you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. But anyway, welcome to All Right, What's Next? Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to make something out of this stack a freaking one by white pine, whatever the, you know, the, the cheap shit that you get at a freaking uh, uh, big box freaking lumber store, hardware store, like Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. This is a whole bunch of freaking cutouts from another project. Uh, didn't know what to do with it. It's like throw it on the burn pile, whatever. I think I've come up with an idea. I am going to try and make a uh, a Halloween candy bowl out of this stuff. Never made a bowl before, so I'm going to start with an extremely complicated, difficult one. Which, you know, that's how everyone should start out. Don't work your way up. Start out with the most complicated shit you can come up with. And, and then fail and get frustrated and pissed off and never do it again. But, I have this huge stack they're not quality. They're not level. The glue joints where I've glued them together, they're not at all proper and ready to be glued together. So, what we're going to do, start with, we're going to take all of this shit over to the, uh, the, the planer, the face planer, or the mill, whatever they call it, and we're going to run it through repeatedly until we get nice flat level glue surfaces. And then we're gonna figure out how to make these actually more round. We're gonna cut the centers out and we're gonna shape this thing. And it's gonna go on the lathe and get shaped. So, first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and run this thing through the freaking uh, mill uh, over and over and over and over again. This piece, we're not, we're not gonna need that piece. We'll just, we'll use that broken piece up on the top. Alright, so I got them all ran through the freaking, uh, the face planer. They're all relatively flat so they can be glued together. Now, <clears throat> my lathe will handle up to a 12 inch uh, bowl. Hold on, I got Close to 13 inch diameter freaking discs, roughly. Uh, we're going to drop it down the center of this bowl, the biggest portion. We're going to go to an 11 inch uh, diameter. Now, I don't want this to be a sphere. Uh, we're going to make this oval shape. <clears throat> so we have the wood that we're going to use. Now we've got to. Uh, we got to cut them all to freaking shape, hollow them out, and glue them together. All right, now I need to figure out how to, how to lay this thing out. I got my two, my two center pieces, and the stair step down, stair step up boards. Uh, my center piece, we're going to start out 11 inches, so I already got my, my compass set here at five and a half inches. Marked center. We don't have to find the freaking center of this piece of wood. Just make sure that you're, when you draw your circle, it ain't going to go all the way off. All right. So, that's five and a half. It's going to be an 11 inch. We need to... We need to step this down. I'm not sure how much. If we drop it down to so that guy there, this will be. Oh shit! Let's see what it looks like. We drop her down just a simple half an inch, make it a 10 inch circle. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be enough. Let's bring it down to. Yeah, we'll go with the. The next step down, we're gonna go with the nine inch. 
Nope. Nope. Too fucking small. I'm going to bump it back up an extra half inch. Can always make it smaller. Plus one board. Make sure we'll stay. All right. Now for our minus two board, we'll drop that down. Let's see. We've got this one set five. Now we'll drop this. Let's go down to four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Let's drop her to three and a half. Three and a half. Let's just drop this one three and a quarter. So it's gonna it's gonna come off fairly quick and then roll under. Okay. Now I gotta cut all these out and then figure out the dimensions of the inside because then we gotta cut the insides out because well it's gonna be a bowl. So I shut the camera off. I'm gonna take this over to the bandsaw, get all these cut out. I'm gonna turn my radio back on. Okay, design change. Uh, I decided I'm not going to use layers four and five on the top or the bottom. I like this shape. This will work out just fine. It'll be a nice small little bowl, uh, especially since it's my first bowl. I don't want to get too out of hand. But we got to cut the centers out. Now, these top two pieces, these are going to stay solid. So that'll get set aside. And I've already gone through and cited I want to leave two inches of material uh, all the way outside so I have plenty of room to carve on the outside. I haven't haven't decided yet if I'm going to try and carve a face into here. I'm probably going to. And I already went through with my compass and I marked that one. Marked both of the centers. Marked this one, that one, and the bottom one is another one that is going to get left whole, of course. Otherwise, you put shit in there and it just falls out the bottom. That would be stupid to cut that. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole through here, put it on my, uh, my, uh, my scroll saw there, I'm going to cut these centers out, and then I got one more thing that we've got to cut and set up, and then this thing will be ready to glue up. All right, all the cuts are made. It's nice and hollowed out now. The last thing we're going to freaking cut is we're going to make a puck to go on my four jaw chuck. Yep, so we're one and three quarters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to roughly cut this puck out. I'm going to stick it in the lathe real quick, turn it down, make sure it's exactly round, chuck it up in this, make sure it's uh, going to fit nice and snug. We get a really good bite in on it. And then I'm going to center this puck and screw it into the base to make sure it's exactly centered where I want to. And then I'm going to go ahead and get all my clamps out and we're going to We'll clamp this thing up. You probably don't need to watch how to smear wood glue on there. All but right. uh, so I got it all chucked up in the lathe. I got everything set up. I got my freaking camera set up. I got my microphones on. Got everything ready. And uh, I forgot to hit fucking record again. So I've already started shaping this side. Now I'm going to shape this side. I'm going to try and get it round and true because it's still got a little bit of a, a vibration to it. And then hopefully I can start making it look more pumpkin shaped rather than platter shaped. And that's where I'm at right now. And this time I've got record running. I keep fucking doing that. I, I re-record so many videos because I forget to hit that stupid record button. I got the basic shape, uh, went ahead and uh, 
took this right here and uh, laid it on here and I just cut a shallow line all the way around. This is where we're going to attempt to remove the top of the pumpkin. Now, my idea in order, I want to try and keep this as small a line as possible. Once I get it cut, then I'll take some, uh, some veneer probably and glue it to the inside. So when you close the top back up, it still carries over the same shape. So it doesn't drop down in there and you have a freaking divot. But right now, the best idea that I've got is I'm going to take this Dremel with this teeny little drill bit right here. We're going to lock the spindle if it'll lock. Follow this cut line, drill through, move over a little bit. Over and over and over and over, all the way around. And then, and then hopefully, there will be a very minimal amount of wood that has to be removed. I'm going to take this tiny little scroll saw blade. Hopefully, I can get it down in there. And then, all the way around, and remove the last little bit of friggin' wood. Now, this is going to be an extraordinarily time-consuming, tedious as shit task, but I guess it's all right. I got a freaking really loud stereo and a lot of beer, so this is, this is probably going to take a good hour to get this done. So, and turn my radio back on and shut this camera off. Okay. Bump. Got it off of there. Uh, it didn't work out like I was hoping it would work out. It still worked, but it did not work the way I thought. Now, as you see, now I got that saw cut in here. The lid sits in too far, so I'm going to freaking end up putting a veneer on here, maybe on here, to bring it out to where it's perfectly freaking flush. Now, I did all the drill bits, and the drill bits went through, came out along here. Uh, then I tried the little saw blade, but the saw blade wouldn't freaking work. It just kept bending on me. Uh, so I got uh, this tiny little freaking diamond cutting bit in the Dremel and started uh, trying to grind it out and that was not working for shit. I got it down, I don't know, quarter of an inch. Then I decided I was going to try my jigsaw and I got a fairly fine tooth blade in there and just slowly started going around just didn't hold the trigger, just kept bumping it. Worked my way around and that worked really well except as you can see, it didn't follow the, uh, the drill lines. So there's this channel running down in there, which, not a big deal. I'll squirt some freaking wood glue in there. We'll sand this. We'll put a little bit of freaking veneer on there. And you'll never be able to tell. It'll look good. Uh, the outside of it, uh, it's cheap freaking pine. Uh, got some of the end grain, so it kind of chipped out, cupped out a little bit in a few spots. I got an area here where it didn't... Uh, didn't glue down tight, not a big deal. I still have to go through and shape this thing to make it look like a pumpkin, so I gotta take my, I do some power carving on this thing. I gotta, of course, grind out the inside of it and hope it doesn't fly across the shop. That's my next challenge, is I've never done the inside of a bowl, so I'm hoping I can get this rounded in there without having it explode and fly across the shop. All right, so that's gonna be my next challenge. I'm gonna go ahead and get the bowl gouge and I'm going to turn the inside of this thing. I got the inside turned to uh, to good enough. It's nice, got a nice curve all the way around. I don't want to freaking go any further and, 
and take out too much meat because I still think I might want to carve a pumpkin jack lantern face into this thing. I haven't fully decided yet. But uh, now I'm down to just sanding for right now, so I'm going to shut the camera off because my battery is pretty well dead. So I'll get back to you when uh, I make up my mind on whether or not I'm going to uh, carve a face into this. Plus, we still got to shave it, make it look like a pumpkin rather than just a fucking tire. Okay, so I did a whole bunch of shit off camera. Uh, it was not by intention. What it was is I got this off the lathe, uh, set it up. I, I got the little knob on here. I clamped it down on my, uh, my workmate over there. I got my grinder out. Got the camera set up, I got my microphone put on, the battery transmitter back here turned on, I did a test video, I made sure freaking everything's recording, made sure everything's in frame, and uh, when I actually started working on this, I forgot to hit fucking record, again. I lose a lot of video footage because my equipment sucks, and a lot of times my microphone doesn't work, and my camera freaking cuts out, why is it freaking cut out? But I probably lose equal amount of video footage because I fucking forget to hit record. I do it all the time. Now, I on the only on my sixth freaking beer, so I know Bush Light had nothing to do with it. It's only six beers. Uh, it's just, I get ahead of myself. I get in a hurry, and it's like, you know, I kind of, I get into a zone, and I want to start freaking working on something, and I forget about the goddamn camera. So, what I've done is I've got uh, the lid. Uh, crap. There. I put uh, wood putty around the lid and on the inside I sanded that all off. Made that a little smoother. Uh, then I drew longitudinal lines all the way around it, and then I started grinding it to start turning it into a pumpkin shape. I just used an angle grinder with a 36 grit freaking uh, flap disc sander on there, and just ran a groove all the way around it, and then rounded it off. So I have the basic pumpkin shape. Now I have to start refining it and making it look good. Plus, you can't get the angle grinder in towards the stem, and you can't get it towards the bottom. So now it's time to do Dremel work. I'm going to start. I got this little tiny freaking uh, uh, carbide tip grinding bit. I'm going to use that to basically run a line a nice crisp line down the center of uh, where your grooves are and then we can kind of stand out from there. All right, I think we got our, our basic pumpkin friggin' shape now. We need to extend the stem because I want a I want a curved stem. So you got something to get a hold of when you when you're Jones and serve for some friggin' candy. So I got this block of friggin' wood glued up right here. It is slightly 
<laughs> bigger than that. So what we're going to do, we got to find center on it. Right. We're going to drill a hole into that. We're going to drill a hole into that. And then we're going to dowel pin it. So I got some tiny little dowel pins. What? Oh, fuck size those are. Quarter inch. These are quarter inch freaking dowel pins. Oops. All right. Should be more than sufficiently freaking drilled. Take that. I'll take that. We're going to mark out roughly how wide our stem is. And then we're going to kind of freehand something akin to that. And then I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw, cut this out. We'll glue that on and then we'll power carve it into a, a, a nice little curved stem. Okay, now I got it uh, <clears throat> relatively pumpkin-esque looking. I think it looks like a pumpkin. I mean, if you don't know well. Uh, but now we're going to go from a pumpkin to a jack-o'-lantern. So I have to try and carve a face into this. So I guess now what we got to do, try and draw the face on it. I'm going to just utilize uh, this line right here as my center line for the face. And then this layer is going to be going to be my center so I know where my nose is going to go. Mouth will be down here. I keep the eyes above that line. I think I want to start with probably trying to just put some layout points in here. Figure out how wide my my eye spacings are going to be that are going to look okay. Not like that. Now, we're not going to, of course, drill all the way through. We're going to, oh well, can you see that? We're going to cut that out and then we're going to carve it into a shape and not go all the way through because we're not going to put a light in there and plus your candy would fall out the mouth. Once I have this down level, blow the surface all the way through, then we're going to go through and we're going to carve teeth in it. So, let me see if I can start removing a whole bunch of material and try and get the eyes recessed back. Ah, uh, let me get the, I'm going to start. So I've been trying to carve the teeth and, and the eyes and everything on this thing. And it's just, it's being a real pain in the ass. Uh, the, uh, you know, I got different layers of wood. There's going to be different grain patterns, different wood densities. Uh, it's just, it's being a real fucking bastard to try and actually carve these teeth out. I could probably do it if I had a really good set of sharp 
carving tools, hand carving tools. I've got a set, but they are not sharp and they are not quality. They, they suck. Uh, but using the Dremel on it, it wants to grab. It keeps ripping out chunks. I can't get fine detail into it. Uh, so I think we're going to change course. We're going to try something else. I think this will actually work better. It'll look nicer in the long run. Uh, we're going to, we don't need the lid right now. I am going to grind this mouth down much, much deeper, considerably deeper. Uh, I don't know about the eyes and the nose yet. I'm probably going to go ahead and grind them out as well. But then we're going to make the details out of this stuff. This is called green stuff. This is the Army Painters brand of green stuff. Pretty much any model making, uh, if, it, if a company makes paints for tabletop wargaming, miniatures, whatever, more than likely they have a line of green stuff. It's just a two part freaking epoxy, cut a chunk off of it, knead it together, and uh, the blue and yellow colored epoxies turn green. Hence, hence the name. That is the Army Painter one. This one I got from a company called uh, War World Gaming. Uh, I don't know if they uh, make freaking paints or what they make. I got it off of Amazon. I didn't know it was coming from War World, but their card was in it. And their, their package here has a little bit of detail on it. You have approximately one hour of working time with green stuff, and it takes approximately 12 hours for it to set up. So you're not in a big hurry to, to, to get it done. You know, work in small batches, of course, but, uh, you know, you got an hour working time. So this is what we're going to use to try and make the teeth. And I think we're going to come back, grind the eyes out. Uh, to work it, I went ahead and bought a set of car or of, uh, molding tools for, like, working with clay, carving, uh, What's this? Where's the fucking, there it is. Wax Carver brand, I don't know. I think it cost me freaking 12 bucks on Amazon for these things. I have a set of these. I have a set of four nice quality ones somewhere in the house and um, a 24 inch piece of green stuff somewhere in the house. But I can't fucking find it. I don't know where the hell I put it. It's, it's in a box somewhere with other model making freaking stuff. But I couldn't find it and I gave up after, you know, like uh, two, three minutes. So I just got on Amazon and I bought more of it. Now, when you're working with this stuff, knead it together with your fingers. It won't really stick to your fingers. Uh, it's difficult to freaking get started. But once you get it kind of warmed up and it starts forming that uh, the, the green color, it gets easier and easier to work with. But with these shaping tools, what you want to do is get a bowl of water and continually keep dipping the working end into the water before you work with the, uh, the green stuff. Otherwise, it'll stick to it. Um, and then you end up freaking tearing chunks out of your green stuff. If you keep the ends of the tools wet, it won't stick to it. And then, you know, your day will go a lot better. So, first thing we gotta do, grind the shit out of this mouth, get this thing freaking carved down. And I'm gonna start that process with my cuts all extreme freaking grinding ball and then go back to my my smaller bits but to do that i'm gonna kill sound turn my stereo back
Okay, so I'm done with all of the shaping and grinding and uh, molding with the green stuff and everything. Off camera, I went ahead and I primed it. Primed the whole thing white, except for the inside. The inside I prime black. Prime the inside black because I ran out of white primer. But I like the fact that the inside is black. It, it has a really nice contrast. Then I went through and painted it. And that's where it gets complicated. What I did to paint this thing was I took paint and a brush and I, and I painted it. That's why I didn't show it on camera because it's, you're just fucking painting. It took, because this is cheap ass, like $1.75 a container, uh, apple barrel freaking craft paint. Uh, it doesn't have the best coverage. It's, what do you call that, opacity or whatever. It's fairly low. So I had to do three freaking coats on this thing to get a good coverage. And actually a fourth coat, because there was, when I primed the inside black, I got some splatter on the outside. So I had to do a fourth touch-up coat in order to uh, cover up all the little black splatters and get a nice even coat. This is just blocking in the orange. Now the stem, I went ahead and I painted it uh, nutmeg and that took freaking three coats. And I did a small amount of wet blending to it to try and, cause if you ever look at a pumpkin, uh, the orange starts to transition into the, the stem. And I'm not freaking good at painting. I used to be a lot better at it, I haven't done it in a freaking long time. I used to paint miniatures all the goddamn time and I've, I've forgotten how to, to do it. So this is going to be a challenge to actually do the details. But where we're at right now is I have all the orange done. Here is the face that we currently have. I went ahead and got inside the nose and I, and I freaking painted the hell out of that with the, to black to give it some nice dimension and left that uh, little bone piece. What do you, call that fuck out I, I don't remember but now what we got to do we have to finish blocking in the colors that aren't orange around the the, the tear ducts and everything the the gums inside of here we got to block that in and then we're going to put a heavy black wash to fill in all the little uh channels and recesses and that and give it some shadow and then we can come back and rebuild our highlights so that's where we're at right now. I'm gonna take this over to my desk. I'm going to crank the freaking stereo back up and then we're gonna finish blocking these things in and then we're going to make a, a, a simple wash. That's just, it's just gonna be water, flow improver, and some black paint. And then uh, we're gonna cover this thing in a wash. Okay, so I have pretty much everything blocked in like I want it to be blocked in. Now it's time to put a wash on this thing and get some, some depth into it, hopefully, or fuck it up. One or the other. We're either going to put some depth into it or just completely ruin the project. But to put some depth into it, we need shadows. And to make shadows, we are going to do a heavy wash over top of the entire freaking uh, bowl. And a wash is just water and paint. We're just gonna mix up freaking paint till it's eh, about like milk consistency. I'm gonna start with the burnt umber. And it's gonna be burnt umber, black paint, and it's just gonna be this cheap craft paint because you don't need to use expensive shit for this. 
and then we're gonna put in some uh, some flow improver that I don't know fucking it I don't know what it does. I have it, so I'm gonna use it. I don't know if it actually frickin' is needed, but we're gonna we're gonna use it. So we're just I got this bottle of water here, and we're just gonna squirt about about that much paint in there. Then I got some black. That should be, hopefully, enough black. Because I don't have much black left. And we're going to put about that much flow improver in there. Now, without flow improver, you can also use like a little tiny drop of uh, dish soap. I mean, it just does what it says. It helps the, it helps it flow everywhere and not just puddle. Yeah, we're going to take this thing over there and let's throw a freaking wash on it. This is where we're at now. So it's got some fairly harsh freaking uh, contrast and black lines and that, and it really darkened the whole pumpkin up. Right now it looks, well, fairly much like shit. Hopefully I didn't completely hose it with the wash. I don't think I did. But I've been doing a little bit of experimenting and I've got uh, my expensive uh, Reaper paint, orange, trying that and it's gonna require a lot to freaking bring this pumpkin back up to to orange uh, but i grabbed the cheap ass craft paint now this stuff has well it's it sucks it it's uh opacity meaning its ability to cover up another color is relatively non-existent it's pretty fucking atrocious so just doing a a little bit of painting on here using the craft paint on the back side here it is bringing the orange back up and it's really blending in the shadow so i think i can do one or two light layers over it and that's going to blend these harsh freaking shadow lines back into the orange and then i can come back in with a better quality paint and maybe do some highlights on the top of the the pumpkin to make the top, of course, brighter than the bottom. That way it looks like there's actual fucking light shining down on it. So that's what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a considerable amount of time now with this cheap crafts paint and repainting this whole pumpkin and try and get it back. And you see how it goes on there, right there, and you can still see the freaking the nice black shadow lines through it. So hopefully I can feather them out to where it just looks like there's a shadow in the groove to, to make the groove highlighted.
All right, it is almost done. In order to finish off a Halloween candy pumpkin bowl, gotta have candy. Two bags of Skittles. That's all I had in the friggin' house. I made the mistake of forgetting to buy candy when I went grocery shopping. Like I don't really eat candy, that's why I made a candy bowl. Now there's a four-year-old grandkid running around the property. You'd think we'd have candy in the house, but all I could find was two packages of goddamn Skittles. So now there's candy in it though. So this pumpkin bowl, demonic pumpkin bowl, is now finished. I could not be fucking happier. Now, the only problem I got is where am I gonna freaking put it in the house with the highest annoyance factor? By annoyance factor, I mean somewhere where you can see it all the time. It's like, it's not fucking Halloween. Put it away. I'm like, nope, it's staying out. I kind of want to put it on top of my computer because that's right there in the dining room uh, in full view of everything. The only thing is that's where my Tobin Spirit Guide is sitting. If I put this on top of the computer, where am I gonna put my Tobin Spirit Guide? I'm like, you know, problems. Things I gotta freaking figure out. I'm sure I'll find somewhere. Uh, I thought about making a little tiny tray that can sit on top of my printer. I could put it on my printer. I don't ever use that, that top portion anyways. Uh, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Maybe I can slide the Tobin Spirit Guide over far enough and put some little uh, double-sided sticky tape down to keep it from sliding off. And then I can put both the pumpkin and my Spirit Guide up there. I got a couple of little battle neck freaking figures up there too. They might have to find a new home. Anyways, it's done. I hope you really like it. It turned out so fucking much better than I thought it was going to turn out. I absolutely love this thing. It is just creepy as shit. Uh, so remember, subscribe, turn on the notifications, you know, hit that like button, leave me a comment below. Unless it's a negative comment, then fuck right the hell off. I don't need your goddamn negativity on my channel. Keep it to yourself. We'll see you next time.